Last time I spoke here in London, or three years ago, it was a Seville Row suit, warm, and now it's crypto, so I get to be casual. It's a new world. Um, but I want to walk you through my story because I'm known for gold as a gold investor and creating funds and ETFs that are in that space. And I was trying to launch a crypto fund and realized over six years ago it wasn't going to happen uh, due to AML concerns. So I was involved in the, as a co-founder of seeding this company, become the first crypto mining company. And it mines in Iceland and it mines in Sweden and it mines a significant amount of Ethereum using geothermal and hydroelectricity. And during every crisis like we're going through today in these meltdowns in 2018, going to 19, we expanded our footprint going into Canada, in Quebec, and basically I remember buying 10,000 S9s free as just the company wanted to get rid of the facility, and then going into New Brunswick. Now this industry, and I'm so proud of it because the, it's evolved so significantly. When I first launched Hive, uh, it, it, there a whole bunch of other companies came along and they were all pump and dumpers, all get a, make a quick buck. But today, it's evolved into world-class CEOs. And we're gonna see some of them coming on stage here and it's, it's another world. And this is a world where the PE ratios and the compression over the psychology of what's happened in the past week is, creates a great opportunity. And the room is only half full. So that just goes to show who's smart in the room and who is seeing where the opportunities are. Now there's another part is that uh, we've done, uh, Hive has, has created this thing called uh, four videos at four different languages on the amount of FUD, false uncertainty and doubt statements made by NGOs uh, against the energy consumption in the crypto mining industry. And it is massively exaggerated by, with the crypto space, the Bitcoin maxes would call, the in particular, the World Economic Forum Intellectual Socialist Centralist Group. Now, if you go to Miami conference where they have 30,000 people spending $2,000 a ticket, there's something significant happening. And hopefully this presentation can walk you through how we do use hydroelectricity and geothermal. And we're very profitable even with this big correction in the marketplace. What's happening here? Disclosures. Volatility. This is a very important illustration for every investor. Every asset class has its own DNA of volatility. Forward-looking statements have lots of words that are often not read and confused, but everyone understands the math. On a daily basis, it's a non-event for gold or the S&P to go up or down 70% of the time, 1%. But when you go to Bitcoin and Ethereum, it jumps to 3 and 4% on a daily basis. And when you go to over a 10-day period, it's a huge increase on the 10-day volatility. So we're talking about 13 and 11% which is significantly greater than the S&P and gold. Now, when you come to the crypto mining companies or position players like MicroStrategy or Hive, you better tighten up your seatbelt because it's really significant where that volatility is. And it's to understand volatility can be worked as an advantage. And for those who are frightful of volatility, this is not the room to be in. And I remember it being at, with our YPO friends, uh, Fred and, and uh, Jamie at, uh, at Harvard, and it was five years ago. Uh, every year I go with uh, 150 other CEOs and spend a week being a student at Harvard, and everyone in that classroom was down on Elon Musk. And he was crazy, what was he doing? It's a fraud, it's a scam, but today it's for real. So when you're an early adopter, when you are out there in the marketplace with something new, you have to respect this volatility as the adoption process takes place. Pardon me? Oh, it's blocked? So, so Hive is the most volatile. It's the most volatile because we mine both Ethereum and Bitcoin. 
So Hive was the first company to go public uh, as an as a industrial scale crypto mining company. And the first asset was in Iceland and was mining Ethereum. The second major significant asset was in Sweden, in Boden, 100 miles south of the Arctic Circle, 500 yards away from a hydro dam. So what's important for people in the room, and I'm sure most, when I look at the audience here, know these data points, but the adoption process, even with all the negative narrative, continues. Even with this whole argument I hear with proof of stake for Ethereum, uh, which I've been listening to for six years for the creation of Hive, uh, why do the wallets grow? Why is the adoption around the world still expanding if, if it's all of a sudden it's going to become useless? Um, there's 30 million kids that do not have paper roots like I had as a kid. They're all basically mining Ethereum when they go to bed. And they take those GPU chips from their gaming. So this ecosystem is all over the world. And especially when you take a look at Ethereum. And then Bitcoin was the early adopters. Now the kids, that I call them, the gamers, they're all into Ethereum. These are significant data points on the total value traded versus Visa. Now here's the thing on Bitcoin mining. I mean, like the original FUD comes out of a World Economic Forum and then it starts to grow. And Ripple has been allegedly funding something like $5 million on disinformation because the regulatory world is after them for their, for their basically selling securities, not a digital asset. And with that, you see today with Elon Musk going to buy Twitter, and all of a sudden that's pulled back because there's so many bots out there that are on Twitter, and therefore that means there's so much fake news. So how do you manage all of that? So one of the big fake news is out there that, that Fred and Jamie and we all have to deal with is the consumption of electricity. And really, there's so much misinformation about it, but I know it's hard with these chairs to see, but it's significantly lower, and, the, and a group of us have all come together with Michael Saylor and put in our data, and it's substantially, we're talking about 11 basis points, not the country of Switzerland, and not 15 million cars, that, that's really, it's a disinf disinformation at an epic scale. So we've translated, because we realize in Sweden, lots of FUD taking place with regulatory world there, in Spanish, in French, and in English. So not all miners are created equally. Energy prices, hardware prices, crypto prices, hashing difficulty, and lease expenses. And the factors that drive these mining stocks as you can see here, it's the daily coin price. 91% of the daily price action, and it appears that quant funds are using the crypto mining stocks as a proxy because they used to move by the day, then the hour, and now they move by the minute with Bitcoin and Ethereum price action. So as a basket, we are all going up and down and some of us more than others, depending on the news, and if we can have great news, and if Bitcoin is down, it doesn't matter. And it's just a function of what, how this market has evolved and to recognize it, and the greatest valuation is on companies with future potential hashing. Who have bought the most ASIC chips? And that's gonna be Fred Teal's up, who'll be coming up to speak, and uh, he basically cleaned out all the box cars in the world of them, and, uh, and so what happens is that the world anticipates, and this is important about innovation. In my world of looking at decentralized and centralized, centralized looks behind us, socialists look in the past, <clears throat> decentralized look into the future. It's a very different, and innovation is all about looking in the future. And so future valuations and your ability to perform in the future is important. So revenue momentum, earnings momentum, cash flow momentum, high cash returns on investor capital, low P.E. ratios. I was looking at the price action as of last night, and Hive trades at 2.4 times earnings this year. And this Friday, we'll consolidate five for one, and with Bitcoin at $25,000 and Ethereum at $1,500, we would still make, on a consolidated basis, 80 cents. And at $40,000, 
uh, for Bitcoin, Ethereum at 3,000, we make a huge amount of money on a per share basis. We trade at one and a half times future earnings. And based on our footprint to expand over the next 12 months by 60 mega hash, that seems to be uh, in, in, in baked into the, the model. So we use 100% green energy. And things that we have done with this is that we're building a greenhouse. We're gonna become the cucumber kings of, of uh, the Nordic countries. Uh, so there's no carbon footprint coming from Spain or, or from Italy for vegetables. And in La Chute in Quebec, we basically take our 40,000 square foot building and those 10,000 hair dryers, think of them with 1,400 watts of electricity that you turn on, are blowing lots of hot air and they're now going over to heat a building 200,000 square feet. So we optimize the use of energy and that is really a significant another level when you're looking at it. This is our facility which is about 80,000 square feet uh, mining Ethereum mining Ethereum with AMD chips, with NVIDIA chips, uh, and our chips are, are also chips that allow us to pivot and go into uh, high performance computing. This is the dam, which is only a touchdown pass away from our facility. Our cost of electricity there is two cents. We're able to hedge our electricity, and that gives us a huge competitive advantage when it comes to driving high efficiency and ratios. And you can see here, we're expanding our footprint in New Brunswick, going to 70 megawatts. Electricity is more expensive in New Brunswick, and we're working on methodologies that do hedging against, uh, it's, it's complex, but we think we're pretty close to figuring it out. But the five to one consolidation happens Friday. Uh, it's been greatly misunderstood. Uh, it seems by all the retail market, particularly in the US, uh, and in particular this character, if you take a look at the peak in all of our stocks, it took place last year when Elon Musk made the statement about the consumption of carbon energy. Um, Hive's hash rate growth outlook uh, will be up to six exahash. And, and from a revenues point of view and earnings point of view, it's substantial. Uh, we've also negotiated a deal with Intel where the chips are substantially less expensive than what Bitmain and other providers are coming out with. And it's 40% cheaper and 40% more efficient. So even with this correction, you can, when you buy ASIC chips, you pay a per terahash. That's the way that you buy, you know, you buy housing at per square foot. So when you go to buy ASICs, it's per terahash. And the terahash prices really haven't come down to basically give you a payback within six to nine months of mining. And that's what it was 18 months ago. So with that, when we go do a deal like with Intel, we have a substantial competitive advantage relative to what you have to go buy equipment today. Efficiency, uh, efficiency ratios. Uh, as you can see here, we've been very, very efficient. I try to explain to people it's because we mine Ethereum, but Bitcoin maximists, they don't like Ethereum. So that's my reality. But as a fund manager, I'm all about generating the highest cash flow returns on invested capital on a per share basis. So I'm thrilled that we've been able to deliver this high efficiency, that PE ratio is substantially less. And each of us that will be speaking later on have a unique positioning in the marketplace, which is important. Uh, Self-mined crypto production of public companies. As you can see, when you mine our Bitcoin and Ethereum, you combine them, uh, still we're the most uh, highest revenue per share. And the momentum over the last four quarters continues as we take our Ethereum revenue and roll it out into expanding our Bitcoin, only using green energy and building facilities and building greenhouses so that we have this sort of complete ecosystem. And we get you to hold our Bitcoin, which hurts you in a downdraft because of mark to market, but in an up cycle, it's phenomenal because it adds additional investment income to your company. And this is the leading mining peers in cash flow from operations. I'll skip this. And we've made several investments uh, in the crypto industry. Uh, Network Media Group, uh, Titan, uh, Tokens.com, and DeFi Technologies. 
They're all great companies, great management, and we like to see anyone that's particularly using Ethereum uh, to be sponsoring the Ethereum network by these, make, these indirect investments. We run everything as, as least amount of employees per that we can. The model, when I first can, saw this opportunity, it reminded me of the gold mining industry royalty companies. Franco Nevada was the first company I ever took public. It was so long ago, it was like 83 before half of this room was born. Uh, and I look out here. Uh, it, but it has revenue of $24 million of, per employee. Barrick, it has a royalty on Barrick's assets and there's $600,000 of revenue per employee. So this model that we have of, of crypto mining lends itself like a SaaS technology stock or a gold mining royalty company where there's the incredible revenue potential, high gross margins per employee. So even with this crypto meltdown, so we go from making $500,000 a day to a quarter million after all of our expenses a day. So this business, even with these corrections, uh, if you have a low cost structure, have phenomenal opportunity on the upside.